I don't have puppies. I don't even have little kids. We tried to steal the little kids and have them sit back here, but, but I have these fabulous educators here with us today um, who knock Tier 1 instruction out of the park every single day, and we had the opportunity to bring these guys to you. I was super excited. Um, when, and it's kind of dramatic, but the holy grail of Tier 1 instruction, and when we get the time to put on our instructional leader hat, um, what are we looking for? We're looking for those key instructional strategies that can take all students, all students to high levels of achievement, right? And that, that would be the, what I would think the holy grail is. What are those key instructional strategies? I don't know how you all are doing in your search for it, but I certainly haven't found it yet. For, it fits for every single student. But the closest thing I can find in our building are these three ladies right here. Uh, true professionals, um, they continuously reflect on their practices. Uh, I think Kristen said, Tier one, the what, the how, and I would throw in the why of what we do and what they do on a constant basis. They hit the how all the time, and they hit all the key parts. Their, their classrooms are active and engaging places to be. When you walk into them, great things are happening. Student-centered learning, uh, teacher acting as facilitator. Uh, they build student choice. Their student movement. Kids are up moving around in their classroom. Uh, they embed literacy, of course, in the languages. That's you would think that's natural, but it's not all as natural. Speaking, reading, writing, listening, commonplace in their classrooms. Um, dare I say, differentiated instruction. They build that in there. They have high expectations for every kid that walks through their building, uh, walks in their classroom, but they also dif differentiate for their students. Classroom management's differentiated. Um, their classrooms are good places to be. The, the what? They continuously reflect in their PLCs and their professional in their practice of what the curriculum is. Vertical articulation, horizontal, they're constantly uh, reflecting upon and changing those things to meet the needs of their students. Um, the why, and this is important, and this is some of the stuff that's really changed in their languages, is the why of a language classroom is not so you can just build a simple sentence or learn what the colors are or the, the numbers. It's so you can communicate. That, that's the why of, an of a Spanish language classroom, of all our language classrooms. And they, they build that in, and they've really changed their curriculum to meet those needs. Um, what was interesting, so you think they all have exactly the same classroom. They don't. If you walk into them, you know, one has groups in pods, another has their students in pairs. One of them came to me at the beginning of last year and said, do I have to have desks in my classroom? I said, no, no, Melissa, you don't. So <laughs> not sure what we're going to do, but yeah, let's get rid of the desks. Um, so that, but what you do have is common is they do have high achievement for all their students. Uh, we have high levels of achievements as measured on standardized measures of assessments if we want to go that far. So they definitely do that. Apple test, the AP test, they do that. But it's the vertical part. They build from their 1-2 classes all the way up to the AP classes. So when we think of Tier 1 instruction, when I think of my building, and these guys, what they do could be taken to any classroom uh, in any building at any level, and we're certainly proud of them, and they're going to get a chance to share some of what they do here with you today. So with that, here's our language teachers. Thank you. Good morning. It's very humbling to be here today. This is also very intimidating. Um, we would like to start by thanking our administration for supporting us and trusting us to try new things like no desks, make mistakes, and learn from them, and also sending us to conferences and training constantly so we can stay on the cutting edge of what it means to be an effective language teacher. Okay, we'd really like to address what it means to be globally minded first because like Tom said, learning a language is not about just conjugating verbs and memorizing vocabulary. It's about our students be, being able to take what they learn and go out and actually use it somewhere else, in the real world, in their jobs, in other places. And so we, we really focus hard on getting them to that point where they can take what they've learned and go out and utilize it in a way that actually promotes um, community and promotes other people being able to um, interact in a way that is positive. So some of the benefits that we've seen as we've taken this more globally minded approach to learning are um, proficiency. Our students have become more proficient, which just means that 
instead of just being able, like Tom said, to write a simple sentence or conjugate verbs correctly, they can use the language to accomplish other tasks, whether those are having a conversation or presentational. Um, we've seen an increase in their levels of cultural competency. Cross-cultural communication is becoming an increasingly important part of the workplace, and so we're trying to promote that cross-cultural understanding with our students as we teach them about different Hispanic cultures. Um, and then we've also seen an increase in their um, perspectives. They've been able to understand other perspectives, not just by learning about those perspectives, but we've really tried to give them experiences where they can actually be involved in that other perspective and understand what someone from a different culture would be thinking about a particular situation. So today we want to start by focusing and sharing with you how we incorporate the 21st century competency skills in our classrooms. Okay, um, the key, the, one of the key components is collaboration, and that's not just as a team, but we want to teach our students how to collaborate in an effective way so that they are able to survive in the target language with a native speaker. So we do a lot of interpersonal speaking, interpretive um, activities and presentational as well. So they're communicating with each other, they're communicating and interacting with technology, they're communicating in the community, and then they're coming back and presenting it as well. So another uh, 21st century skill that we wanted to touch on was knowledge construction. Um, one of the things that we really appreciate that our administration did last year was they enabled us to bring back the um, Spanish for Spanish Speakers program because the needs of students who grew up hearing Spanish in the home and who could maybe even speak Spanish are very different from the needs of someone who's coming in and learning a second language for the first time. So they enabled us to bring back this program and we're able to um, collaborate with the English teachers and give literacy instruction in both English and Spanish. The kids read a variety of different texts. We're reading um, geography, art, history, science. They're interpreting graphs and tables all in Spanish. And so this is not only um, increasing their knowledge of their heritage language, but it's also reinforcing what they're learning in their other classes, in their biology class, in their math classes, again, in their English classes. We really hit a lot on literacy. Real world problem solving is very important for us. We want to be able to show the students how it will affect them in the real world, taking it beyond the classroom. One of the ways that I do this in my classroom is starting at a very basic level. Starting at first level, we want our students to be speaking in the target language 90% of the time in the classroom, 90% of the time in Spanish. Um, one way that we do this in my classroom is with a pen pal program. We actually have paired up with Mount Rose Elementary School and their TWE program, starting letters back and forth. My students are less inhibited and less intimidated, really, to make mistakes when they're speaking to a third grader. Um, something that we do in my upper level courses is they have to go out and spend time in the community, volunteering and attending um, activities that are beneficial for them where they can interact with authentic resources. And this is a picture of my students that I had a, at an, an event at UNR where an individual came and talked about immigration and about his experience coming into the United States, the challenges that he faced, and later they were able to interact with him to have conversations about what this means and what needs to be done in our community to improve our situations as well. The second bonus to that was they were able to speak with some professors at UNR and it gave them a vision of what it's like to attend a higher education facil facility and they were very impressed. So they're now not only motivated to go out and make a difference in our community with the immigration situation but also they are motivated to go to the university and receive a higher level of education. This is a slide from one of the projects when my students reported back about one of their experiences. They volunteered at one of the local elementary schools and it was one of the most impactful experiences for them because they were able to go into this school and help students who do not speak very much English. And so they were able to use their Spanish to tutor them on math, science, different different things, and they came back wanting to sign up to do this every week. And so our students are coming back not only with the knowledge of the language and culture, but they have a motivation to make a difference in the world. Um, the use of technology is a major component in our program. We use a variety, these are just a few of, of the technological applications and websites we use. One example that I use is Edpuzzle. I have my students 
um, do an activity where they have to listen to an Ed Puzzle uh, video that's from YouTube from authentic resources. The students are listening to people from Equatorial Guinea, which is one of the unknown Spanish-speaking countries. It's in Africa. And they learn about all the problems and the issues that this country is facing. And then they take that information and they have to create a business plan to address one of those issues. They present it to a board um, and we have a, a mock presentation in our classroom and they vote on the best project. Another use of technology that we wanted to touch on was the use of QR codes in the classroom. Um, from this picture, you can see that we have a whole wall full of art. The students had to go out, they had the assignment, they usually will research a topic, then they need to recreate something that they've learned. But instead of standing in front of the classroom and giving a presentation, what they'll do is they'll create a QR code. We have a live museum walk. So students walk around, they can scan codes, listen to presentations, and give real feedback in real time as well as self-assessing with the um, rubric that they have attached to their QR code. We also use virtual reality videos. And you can see from this video, we have our students um, listening and watching a video on the history of Cuban dance. They are surrounded 360 degrees of Cuban culture, food, climate, geography, language. Um, it's all there. And then they have to report back on what they've learned. They each had to pick a specific dance that they learned about and report back on it. We've also been able to, um, as we include these globally minded learning objectives, we've been able to include more self-regulation in our classes because when students see the real world value of what they're learning, they're more motivated to create their own goals and try to reach those goals. Um, again, with the Heritage Speakers Spanish program, one thing that I've done every year is I have them write out what their goals for the year are. They all come from different backgrounds and they um, have Spanish literacy, literacy skills at different levels. So they write out for me what they want to learn that year, and then we go over those together, revise those, and they create posters. And we keep those posters on the wall throughout the school year because it serves as not only motivation for them when maybe they're feeling unmotivated, but then also they can self-assess and they can see, am I meeting these goals? Am I learning what I said, that I, what I, said I wanted to learn at the beginning of the year? Skilled communication is obviously a key component to any language. One of the ways we assess our students is with the national proficiency-based test, APPLE. Our ultimate goal is for our students to graduate with the seal of biliteracy and then move into a Spanish-speaking world where they can use what they've learned to incorporate the language. Um, the APPLE assesses in reading, writing, speaking, and listening, and we have extremely high pass rates. So we are definitely reaffirmed of what we are doing by the national proficiency test. Another thing we do is we have students involved with community activities, um, but they also go and they research current events. We learn about politics. We learn about different types of um, things that they can do to improve in not only other cultures, but also in their own culture. And so one of the projects that my upper level students do is they do a political unit. They have to research things and they have to come up with three platforms and then they run for president. So they create a political campaign. This is um, one of the campaign commercials from one of our students. Necesitamos un presidente que va a combatir contra el analfabetismo. Necesitamos un presidente que va a combatir contra el narcotráfico. Necesitamos un presidente que va a luchar para el medio ambiente. Me encantan los animales. Y los animales. Hola, me llamo Tanner Amundsen y me postuló para la presidencia porque me necesitan. Voy a detener el analfabetismo y narcotráfico y pelear para el medio ambiente. Incluso mis competidores me gustan. Esto es mi vicepresidente Mackenzie Sullivan. Y vamos a ganar esta elección porque nos necesitan. Me llamo Tanner Amundsen y apruebo este mensaje. So with all these techniques, some of the data that we are encouraged by is the fact that over the last four years, we've increased in allocations in our one department, one and a half. We've also had over 100 students at Galena High School in two years 
qualify or earn the seal of biliteracy, and we have almost 50% of the student body population enrolled in a foreign language when it's not even an, a requirement. We are very proud of the work that we're doing at Galena High School. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Um, so what with with you guys hear here is what they do, honestly, on a daily basis. You can see why it's so, what a privilege it is to work with these guys in the classroom. And I failed to mention Ms. Melissa Ballard, Ms. Melissa Carson, Ms. Rachel Tillotson is who we have up here with us today. Um, you know, for, for my seat and from your guys' seat, you know, to support them, we start with setting a vision of high expectations for all students at our school. And that's easy, way easier said than done. And we all know that. Um, and that's the vision that comes in working with these guys. Um, also, make decisions at the site based on the work that these guys do. My best performers. And that, that's, the, that's how decisions are made when that's the litmus test. What, what do they need? What's good for, and, and we bring them in, we talk to them, we take input from them, because that's, that's where decisions are made at that level. Um, and then try and remove barriers. And it's easy to support them. And try and remove barriers, provide them opportunities for professional development to say yes when they ask something, they need something to support them in what they do, but really removing those barriers to anything that would cause them not to be able to meet the needs of all the students for tier one instruction. And again, the data does back up like they highlighted what they do, but they're just, and the kids, I failed to mention this earlier, like being in their classes. They've increased their allocations. 50% of their kids are in a language. It's an elective course. They don't have to be there. Uh, they, they elect to come to their courses. Um, and they're challenged. It's a rigorous curriculum. And so all those things um, come to mind, and it builds for a really strong language program and really strong instruction that can be used not just in language programs, but for any classes. Their instructional techniques, the things they do are good for all kids in all classrooms, and we see it throughout our school at Galena High School. So these guys are a model of what educational professionals should be. So thank you, ladies, and that is our presentation.